It is yet another great hour, an hour of inspiration and the attendant uh, dividends. It is the, the charismatic hour of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement is a place where God has placed his name, placed his word, his power, and his spirit. It's a place of encounter with Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a place of worship of God in spirit and in truth. It's also a place where revelation knowledge flows. And it's also a place where God turns the stones of this life, the challenges of this life, into pillows. The charismatic hour has been designed so we can draw inspiration to deal fatal blows onto the challenges of this life. The topic we are considering at this hour is if God helped Jesus Christ, should he not help us? Should he not help you? Should he not help me? Once again, if God helped Jesus Christ, who came from heaven, should he not help us who came from the earth? So then, I enjoin you to open the door of your mind. Open it wide. For the good that will come from the word of the Lord, the infallible word of God. We'll move on, as usual, to draw preliminary inspiration as we join our music ministers to sing unto the Lord two hymns. The first one is titled, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. The second one is higher ground. I'm pressing on to higher ground. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Titled Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Oh, oh, oh. 
time to pray and get prepared for the infallible word of God. Word of God is a quickening word, searching the heart and the reins. Eternal Father, thank you very much. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, because of who you are. You never can change. Every now and again, when we come to your word, when we speak your word, the truth of your word, when we argue with the truth of your word, you pay the utmost attention. You attend to every person. Every person means every person. It doesn't matter the calamities that surround the person. It doesn't matter the location of the person. Your eyes run to and fro all the nooks and crannies of this world to show yourself strong, not feeble, in the matter of people whose heart are perfect toward thee. Show yourself strong, a strong one, the defender of the defenseless, precious Lord, the savior of those that need salvation. Thank you for this hour. Lord, as we consider even this wonderful topic, let it be a source of uh, dealing fatal blows onto all the challenges of this life that surround the people who are listening. I bless your name because I know it is done already. Whatsoever we are that is according to your will, we have the confidence that you have had us. I look forward, Lord, to having a lot of testimonies all over the world through the, this particular message. If God helped Jesus Christ that came from heaven, surely not help us. Lord, in the recent past, Lord, we consider the question, shall not the judge, the righteous judge of the, all the earth, not do right? Abraham asked the question. He asked it directly to the almighty God. And the Lord said, I will do right. Later on, many years, thousands of years after, the son of Abraham, as far as the flesh is concerned, Jesus Christ of Nazareth asked the same question. Shall not the judge, the righteous judge of all the earth do right? And he answered, he said, he will do right speedily. He will do good. He will do that which is uh, proper. Do it speedily unto them that call upon him. And then he asked the question when he finished even the parable. When the son of man comes, shall he find faith on earth? Shall he find people? who are believing God. Shall he find people who are arguing with the word of God? Lord, I pray that at this point in time, make it possible that you find people even before you come. Thank you for answer to prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are prayed. Amen. Welcome once more to the charismatic hour. And uh, the question has been asked as the title of the message and uh, it is as follows once more. If God helped Jesus Christ, shall he not help us? Now, we also answer that question and let everybody that is listening unto me benefit maximally. Trash all the matters that are surrounding you, all the, all the challenges of life. Deal with the ones that are coming in the future. So long as life is running, problems will continue to come because problems come from Satan and Satan has not been uh, hounded uh, finally into the lake of fire. Meanwhile, he's still roaming about and so challenges will come. Now, but the Lord throws his uh, word unto his people, those that have faith, those that uh, know him, those that believe in him. And they are always equal to the task. They are on top of the situation. Now, for us to know whether God answered Jesus Christ of Nazareth who came from heaven, will answer us, attend to us, even in the present day, redeem us and save us, we need to show a contrast between the one that he answered of old and us that are living now. Contrast means that one is uh, 
big, very big. The other is very small. One is high, and then the other is very low. One is very high, the other one is very low. That's what we're talking about. That's what we mean by contrast. The Lord Jesus Christ we're talking about contrasted to us. The one that God had, the one that God attended to, the one that God saved, the one that God listened to when he was into trouble. Very high, we very low. He very mighty, we very small. Now I show, when the Lord Jesus Christ was in this world as a human being, listen to me, he was fully man and fully God. He was completely man because he had every organ in human being. He had eyes, he had lungs, he had kidney, he had, he had feeling. He could be hot, he could be angry, he could be hungry, he could have feeling, he could feel pain. So he was fully man. And let's see that he was fully man. In John's Gospel, we are told by that apostle that had great insight as to who Jesus Christ had been and who he was while he was on earth. Apostle John, in John's Gospel, chapter 1, we read, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. This word was with God, meaning, like we have always explained, the word of God that was inside him was outside him as a spirit being at the same time, side by side with God, a spirit being, an intelligible being, just like God himself. And so, that is how it was from all eternity. And then, in the process of time, now the Lord decided that that word, that being, who is his word, should now metamorphose into a human being. And he became a human being. How did he become a human being? Some mechanism of the Holy Spirit made it so. And then in a twinkling of an eye, he disappeared from the right side of the majesty on high and then became child in the womb of a virgin. And then what we have to that effect is in verse 14. And the word, capital letter W, was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He was made flesh. He became a human being. He lived in the womb like we lived in the womb, and then was born like we were born and grew up, and grew up like we grew up, and then became an adult, and then had feeling. So he was fully man. But he was also fully God. Remember, we are doing a contrast. We are contrasting the two categories of people, Jesus Christ and we human beings. He was fully man and then was also fully God. And then that this is the proof. Was fully God. Let's see how he was fully God. In John's Gospel, we're reading from chapter 3, John chapter 3 from verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. The testimony of uh, uh, John the Baptist. He that is of the earth is earthly. John was comparing himself to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came from above the way we have seen it in John chapter 1. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he had seen and had that 
he testified, and no man received his testimony. He that had received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. For he whom God had sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. That's why he was fully God. God did not give the spirit of God, the third person in the blessed trinity to him by measure. Let us assume that the volume of the spirit of God is at the volume of the universe. I'm making an assumption. Now, Jesus Christ did not receive 90% uh, of that volume. He received the totality of that volume. And so he was fully God and fully man by, by, by means of the fact that his, the spirit of God was fully residing in him. We are not the same. Ours is uh, some measure of the spirit of God, and so we are not fully God. We have some element of God for those that have the spirit of God inside them. You have some element of God inside you. But this one, this man, was fully God. And that is the reason he made the following statements as we read from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though he believe me not, believe the works that he may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. The Father is in me, and I in him. The Father in me, and I in him. Look at verse 30. I and my Father are one. How can somebody say that? If not because of this knowledge, if not because of what you have had, I and my Father are one. No separation. I am the same with my Father. And then he confirmed it further as he went on with his disciples. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, and then from verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled, he believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's heart are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And uh, verse 4 says, And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him, and I have seen him. Now you have seen the Father, and known the Father, because you have seen me. I am the Father, the Father is me. And then... Philip, in verse 8, said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and they suffice at us. Now, Jesus was surprised. And verse 9, he said, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? By what mechanism? The Father was in him by the fullness of the Spirit of God that was in him. And then he said, The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me speaketh the words and doeth the works. So, fully man, fully God. But are we fully man and fully God? We are not. We are just human beings. Listen to me. Every one of us was born by the mechanism, biological mechanism of man and woman meeting. No more, no less. And then even if you were, if you were born through the IVF, and then it is still the same mechanism. Now, some scientific instrument uh, um, that represents the womb is uh, formulated and and that mixture is put there, and it is developed there. So it's the same mechanism. But this was not so with Jesus Christ. 
He came by what is called the mother of metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is that somebody changes from a status to another one. Assuming that you can see even a lion to change from being a lion and becoming a rat. That's metamorphosis or vice versa. So he came by metamorphosis. We didn't come by metamorphosis. We came by biological mechanisms. And so we are flesh and blood. We are dust and ashes. Abraham recognized that when he was uh, presenting his argument before the Lord. He said, I that am dust and ashes, permit me uh, to speak to you once more. We are flesh and blood, dust and ashes. And so we didn't come from heaven. John the Baptist said it. He that came from heaven is above all. I came from the earth. My father and my mother are Elizabeth and uh, Zacharias. So it is uh, with every one of us. Now, now the question is, how is it that God, having attended, having answered, even this person that is a departure from us, he answered him, he attended to him, and if he needed salvation, he would have given him salvation. That means if he needed to be born again, he would have given him to be born again. In fact, when it was necessary for him to go through water baptism, now he came to John, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist said, what it was the matter? I should be baptized um, in the water by you, and you are coming to me. It's not necessary. No, he said it's necessary. That we might fulfill all righteousness. So if he needed uh, salvation from sin, which he didn't need, he would have gotten it because uh, it was necessary. Now, how come that uh, such a person was attended to by God? His prayers were answered. He was protected. And then somebody will now think that God will not much more attend to us that are low, that are incapacitated, that are full of infirmities, want to show evidences that uh, God attended to Jesus Christ, answered his prayer, saved him in the dead that he needed to save him, saved him from premature death, answered his prayer, died with his enemies. Remember that in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, after that he had been born. And then there was this king that was ruling. Who would not want that rival? And then he became angry. He became envious that an information had been given. The savior of the world, the king of kings has been born. And then he decided to eliminate that king. But now God knew his mind and then made the wise man to return another way. And then did not return to him according to his request. Was that not God saving Jesus? Was it not God protecting Jesus Christ that came from heaven? It was. And now we find that there is a summary of uh, the fact that God attended to him. In Hebrews chapter 5, we're reading from verse 1. For every high priest that came from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifice for sins. Who can have compassion on the, on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself he also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, Jesus Christ, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, were strong crime and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was hard in that he feared 
That is the totality. That is the summary. He was guided by the spirit that was in him from premature death. He was saved. He was protected. He called upon God. When he needed the help of God, an angel came and strengthened him. In Luke's gospel, we are reading from chapter 22, verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down, and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Somebody that had the fullness of the Spirit, somebody that was God fully, a man fully. But because of uh, the fact that he was in the flesh, because of the fact that pain was not uh, removed by the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, child of God. Listen to me, anybody. The Holy Spirit does not remove pain. Pain is there. The Holy Spirit can be in you. And the Holy Spirit uh, can prevent you from dying and can also allow you to die. Do you know that when you die, maybe prematurely, there are people who may die prematurely because of lack of knowledge, because they didn't know what they should know, and they die prematurely, they, surely if they are living, they were living right, we go to heaven. But they died prematurely. They didn't fulfill their destiny on earth. And then the Spirit of God did not die when uh, the person, for instance, uh, is shot dead by some uh, wicked people because the person was not careful. Now he dies. And now that, uh, that bullet did not kill the Spirit of God. That bullet did not even kill the Spirit of the man, not to talk of the Spirit of, uh, of God. So the Spirit of God goes away. So... Here, we find that the Lord was into pains. And then, and then he needed some kind of strengthening. And then, you are now saying, God, who did this thing? How is it that he will not strengthen somebody? How is it that somebody that is into pains, how is it that a widow that is into pains and you are crying? How is it that... Uh, Somebody that has lost some, lost your health, and you are crying and are saying, God, heal me. God, save me. And you are believing God, and that God will not save you. How is it that you are, you are being incarcerated, and then by something, by something, by something that is uh, beyond your imagination, beyond your, your, your making? You can't understand why am I having all this kind of mesmerization, why is it that the night time is that fearful? Why is it that I'm so, I'm so disturbed? Why is it that I'm hearing voices? Why is it that I am tormented in my soul, in my spirit, in my mind? And then, you are calling upon God, and God that had Jesus Christ that was fully God and fully man, why will he not hear you is a question that we are asking. If God had Jesus Christ that had all the way with us, all the privilege, we are unprivileged. We, if we can use the word fortunate, he was fortunate, we are unfortunate. He was high up there, we are low down there. He was God's word personified. Listen to me. Jesus Christ is described as the wisdom of God, the embodiment of wisdom of God, the embodiment, the wisdom of God and moving around. But you are not the wisdom of God moving around. If you have some wisdom from God, you have some element of wisdom, some percentage of wisdom. If you have a knowledge of God, Listen to me, the knowledge of God you have cannot compare to the knowledge of God that Jesus Christ had. He came from heaven, you didn't go to come from heaven. You have not born in heaven, you have not born in paradise. He came from paradise. He had experience. He could close his eyes 
or open his eyes. He didn't even need to close his eyes and say, Father, thank you because I know that you have had me and you hear me always. Lazarus, come out. And it happened like that. That was what awareness could bring. At a point in time, I was saying, the thing that I said to you, is it offensive? Suppose you see the son of man return to where he was before. He came from somewhere and it was always in his senses that he came from somewhere. He knew how that place is. But you never went to that place. You never had that experience. You can't draw from that because you didn't have that experience. And so, but this individual, now because he's in the flesh, now because he's being opposed by some demons, how is it that God answered him and attended to him and saved him. If he needed healing, God would have healed him. In order to do what? In order to be alive and fulfill his ministry. This person was hard. This person was helped. And now, how is it that God, in all his righteousness, will not help the person that is crying? Hagar was uh, that mad that was uh, uh, given to Abraham by his wife, the legitimate wife. And this lady uh, became pregnant and then had a baby and then the child and the mother were now mocking. And then we have uh, this uh, information in Genesis chapter 21. We see the information from verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham, Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which he had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And and uh, verse uh, 14, Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent, water finished in the bottle, from the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were, a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the Lord and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What led thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had heard thy voice, the voice of the Lord where he is. Listen to me attentively. This woman was... Uh, very incapacitated. It was not her fault. God knew that. Because God is a God of understanding. And then at this point in time, for no fault of her, she became pregnant. And then, and then had a child, and then they were, she was sent away with the child. And then the child was crying. He put the child away and turned against the child. Let me not see the child dead. But God, in his mercy, came to the head of the person, even through the angel. Now, God that has this great understanding, sending an angel to go and attend, to hear and attend. Why will he not in the present day, in the present day of predicament, the present day of challenges, in the present day of devil's onslaught, terrible onslaught, left, right, center, up, down. How will he, how will he not attend, how will he not answer his people? I will not answer those that call upon him. I will not answer those that have no food to eat. I will not answer those that have nowhere to go, no shelter. Is a question. 
God will do much more. Listen to me. There was a time in times past when Daniel was praying and then the angel was sent to Daniel to give an answer in Daniel chapter 10. And then, and the angel was coming. But then there was a, a principality, a demonic angel that was in charge of the area. And then, Wale, this angel that was coming to Daniel and made him stay there for 21 days and would not allow him to pass. But and then, there was uh, uh, information given, and then Michael came from heaven, the archangel, even to aid, to help out. Now, the Lord that did all these things in times past, the Bible says he does not change. He helped the people. He helped an angel. He helped an angel that was sent to give information to a man of God. And now that angel was wallet. And then, but he helped an angel. He helped that angel. If he helped an angel, why will he not help a human being? If he helped Jesus that was fully God and fully man, why, why will he not help us in the present day? It is necessary that people should hear and think. This is what we know to be true, and that is completely true. Now, God fulfilled responsibility he had toward his son, Jesus Christ. And then, he will of necessity fulfill the responsibility he has towards his children. What does somebody need to do? Somebody only needs to ensure that you are his child. And it is simple to become a child. To do what? To do away with sin, the thing that make you not to have the spirit of God. Listen to me, I'll give you an illustration. If there is a bottle, we have said it before, that contains some liquid, but that liquid is not clean. And you want to put a, a clean, clean water, purified water, into that same bottle. You need to remove the unclean something from the bottle. You turn it this way, and after you have turned it this way, you rinse it and remove every impurity from the something, from the bottle, and then you can now put the clean water. That is how it works. By confession of sin, you are removing sin. You are rejecting sin. By renouncing it, you are saying, I don't want it. I don't want Satan. I don't want all the spirits that uh, whose business is to transfer sin, whose business is to, uh, to make sin, to rule men. I don't want that. And you are confessing that. And uh, you are asking for forgiveness. You are, you are taking away something from your heart, from your mind. And then when that is done, listen to me attentively. And you ask the Lord to come into your heart. Then the spirit of the Lord comes into your heart as uh, an earnest of the spirit, even as a deposit, as a sign that you belong to me. And now, when that is done, when you are sure about that, that that is your situation, assuming you have not done that, then there is another thing that you need to ensure that that is your situation, that is your circumstance, or that is your status. And what is it? It's written in John's Gospel, I'm reading chapter 8 and verse uh, 29. And he, the father that sent me, is with me. Why? The father had not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. Once you can show that you are endeavoring to do all those things that please the Lord, you fear the Lord, Whosoever you are today, you can begin to walk with God and now to begin to enjoy the things that Jesus Christ enjoyed at the hand of God. You can begin today. And if you have not, if you have not been enjoying, you need to ask yourself why. And if you think that you have, uh, you have a spirit, you are a child of God, and that you are endeavoring to live right, but... The things that are happening show that uh, there is nothing to write home about in the, in the faith you are professing and in the life you are living. Now, find out whether you have information. Find out whether there is any element of faith in you, any element of information. 
Do you know this thing that we are talking about? If you have not known it, you may be suffering as a result of this uh, ignorance because the Bible says that my people, uh, in lack of, because of lack of knowledge, they suffer. They suffer some, some pain. They suffer some lack. So then now that we are knowing that he that answered the person that came from heaven, that was, was fully God. But because he was fully man, he needed to answer him. He needed to attend to him. Now we are all together incapacitated. We are not like him. And I can tell you this. If there is any person, if there are people that you should answer, it is not the angel. It is we. You have flesh and blood. Angel doesn't have flesh and blood. Angel does not feel pain. Jesus Christ felt pain because he was a human being. And now you are feeling pain and you are a child of Jesus Christ and you say you are following the Lord. Now, let us get what belongs to us because it is proper that we should get what belongs to us right here on earth. What then do you do? Do the needful. Ensure that you are a child. Ensure that you are living right. And then ensure that... You apply knowledge. You apply knowledge. The knowledge you are having. You know what? Some people, their problem is this. Now they hear it once and that's it. Ah, what an awesome word. What an awesome uh, word. And that's the end. They don't go back to it. If you don't go back to it, I'm asking you, how can they think now? begin to saturate your mind. Do you know that uh, your mind is like uh, foam, F-O-A-M. And then you put water there and then the water is percolating inside it. You can rinse that water out. You can rinse it out and a larger chunk of the water will have been rinsed out. And you can also put it under some sun, also some heat, and it dries off. And there is no water inside it again. Their mind is like that. And if your mind is taking the word of God, the truth of God, and is saturating your heart as the water is saturating that uh, object that I've mentioned, then you are full of faith. Then you are full of argument, argument that we hold. The point today is God added and helped and answered he that came from heaven. He that came from the earth much more needs God's attention and needs God's answer. Let's not die because of ignorance. Let us not suffer too long. Jesus Christ who came from heaven is our senior brother. Go tell them I have risen from the dead I am going to my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. That is what he said. And so he's showing that as God was his father, so God is our father. And uh, if God did fulfill the responsibility toward him, he surely fulfills responsibility. Why do I say that? Hear this. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. Hear it and take it in. Meditate. We are joint heirs with Christ. The prodigal son knew that he was a joint heir with his brother. The person that was listening to Jesus Christ and then and turned him and, and said, Look, you are an authoritative person. Talk to my brother that he might give you the portion of what we inherited from our father. That person recognized that his brother should not take the thing alone. The prodigal son said, my father, there is something that belongs to me from what you own and then give me my portion. Divide the something between me and my brother. And then he gave him his portion. Now, you hear that and then somebody says, I'm a child of God. And then you are a child of God having the spirit of God sure. You have the spirit of God, sure, and then you are, you are lamenting, you are calling upon your grandfathers. You are calling upon some individual, come and help me. 
You have uh, you've been involved in uh, in um, something that is uh, very um, devastating, and then you are you, you are saying, "Oh my goodness, what is goodness? Is goodness a being?" I'm asking you, is goodness a being? Goodness will not save you. But if you say, oh my God, oh my Jesus, then they will come to your head. Goodness will not come to your head. So let's learn and let's follow the truth. The truth is God who attended to Jesus Christ, our senior brother, and attended to angel that came from heaven. And I attended to a lady called uh, Hagar. Now, he will much more attend to us. He owes us responsibility. Don't pine away. Don't let this situation carry you away and make you to die before your time. Don't panic. Don't tremble. Don't fret. Everything is possible. The Lord is saying everything is possible. Know what you should know. Hear what you should hear. Run it over and over and over and over again in your mind until you are saturated. And when you are done saturated, I can tell you what you are like. Your heart is now like some battery. You know that the battery has cells. And now as they are charging the battery, now electric current is in the cells. Now, as you are charging your battery heart with the, with the electric current of his word, a time will, be, will come when you are fully charged and then you are looking for trouble. They're saying, trouble, where are you? I want to show you that there is a God. I thank the Lord for all the people out there that are listening. It is time to prove that there is a God in this, in this earth and there is a God in heaven and that he attends to people that call upon him. It is time for that proof. Who on to our brokers in the near future. I'm going to talk to you about proof producers. How the Lord is wanting to make proof producers, even for the present world. Proof producers. And I want you to get up your loin, the loins of your heart, and say, okay, something is coming. Something is coming. I have swallowed this more that I've had. Whosoever you are, Whosoever you are, whosoever you are, the Lord is saying, I answered Jesus, I attended to him, I saved him in the day that he needed to be saved because I was a child, fully man, fully child. And then, why will I not save the child? That is not a God. Why will I not save the, the girl? Why will I not save the person whose parents have died? And then the girl whose parents have died, don't go into prostitution because her parents have died. Look to the hills. Look to the hills. From whence cometh our help? Turn unto him that sees you. Look at Hagar and then take a cue from Hagar. Hagar was sent into the wilderness. And then she began to cry and began to cry, where is God? And then God showed up. So don't cry unto anybody. Don't say, okay, let me trip off. Let me use what I have to get what I don't have. Let me become a prostitute. No. Turn unto God. Widow, turn unto God. Widower, turn unto God. Have faith in God. Believe in God. The Bible tells me and it tells you too. In Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe. Number one. That God exists. Number two, that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, it's time for prayer. It's time to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you because of knowledge. Thank you because of insight. Thank you because I know that our Lord Jesus Christ that was filled with the Holy Spirit, that was God fully, a man fully, was answered, was attended to, was protected. If you needed salvation, you would have given him salvation. If he needed sanctification, you would have given him sanctification. And he needed baptism in the Holy Spirit. And you gave him baptism in the Holy Spirit. Why should I not have baptism with the Holy Spirit? Why should I not have sanctification? Why should I not be delivered from my enemies? Why should I not conquer my enemies? If the angel was wallet and you sent a stronger angel, 
And here I am. I'm not an angel. I came from my mother's womb. I'm incapacitated. And the Bible tells me that God has understanding like as a father. Pitied his children. So the Lord pitied them that fear him. Because he know what our frame. He know what our constitution. Remember that we are those. He will hear me much more. And then you are rising up and saying, the matter is done. The deed is done. I know that the Lord has answered and will ever answer me. I will not leave this argument. I have great argument. From today, I will continue to muse on this argument until I get everything that I want in this life. Until all my enemies will perish. Until I survive a coronavirus pandemic. And then push on in life. And then the thing that will come after that, I will overcome all of them because God is in charge. If Jesus was in this world as a human being, would God not have attended to him? That's a question. of ages, thank you very much. I bless your holy name. I speak the word of authority right now. And thou has given us uh, even permission and authority to do. Thank you very much, blessed Redeemer. Great Father in heaven, as I spread out my hands, Lord in heaven, over all them that are watching, that are listening unto this word of truth, Eternal rock of ages, I'm asking the Lord to bring his spirit, spirit of conviction upon every person, eternal father, that has heard. That the conviction was to be so great that they have knowledge that is so rich and by the mechanism of that knowledge, Lord in glory, they will receive everything they want to receive. Word off everything they want, they need to ward off. Conquer everything that needs to be conquered. Remove every manner of fear. Receive every benefit from on heaven, from, from on high. Lord, I thank you. Because I know that uh, the outing is not in vain. God has uh, mechanized them that through them you might uh, heal, you might, might uh, uh, empower the people and that the people might become who they should be. At the end of the day, great father in heaven, you will have made for yourself proof producers. Thank you very much, Lord. Bless every person. Bless the child, bless the boy, bless the girl, bless the man, bless the woman, bless the high, bless the low. Bless the sick. Bring out the sick from the dungeon of sickness, from the pains of sickness. Lord, let divine healing come upon them. Amen. Even as it will have come upon Jesus if he needed it. This is the declaration of the man of God. Every word where they are. Precious Father, I declare divine healing and health in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for answer to prayers. Let them have testimony everywhere. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And I hear them saying everywhere, Amen.